Hi guys, SteamVR and OpenVR in general is a great system which has enabled many gamers to enjoy VR from the freedom of vendor lock-in by providers like Meta. It isn't perfect however and whilst it comes along with some great motion smoothing that has a cost. Unfortunately if you are using the Valve Index that is the cost of doing business. As a first party SteamVR headset you have no other option. Those of us using third party headsets though, like the Reverb G2, we have another path to using VR on our Steam games, OpenXR. Specifically for games that don't support OpenXR, we have Open Composite. OpenXR is an open standard to access VR and AR platforms and devices and was developed by the Kronos Group. The standard provides an API that allows developers to target all devices that conform to it. The gist of this is if your hardware manufacturer supports it, then it can be used across all games that have developed or modified for OpenXR. The main benefit we VR users receive is a boost to our frame rate by running a thinner layer between our headset hardware and the games that we all enjoy. At the time of recording, Windows Mixed Reality, Meta Rift, Quest, Quest 2, Pimax, HTC Vive, Vario, and SteamVR all have OpenXR implementations. Whilst I wouldn't say switching to OpenXR will give you game-changing performance improvements, what I did notice in testing is that the headline FPS is better. However, in some games that feels way beyond just that numerical improvement, with the frame rate and frame timing feeling a lot more consistent. Now, I wanted to show you guys visually via benchmark overlays, but unfortunately, many benchmark overlays do not work with OpenXR. NVIDIA's does, but it's not a fantastic overlay. I have produced a pretty graph though, so you can see the relative performance difference between Steam VR Native and Open Composite in both Assetto Corsa Competizione and R Factor 2. Why these two games specifically? ACC is pretty demanding in general, and R Factor 2, well, it isn't. It has some issues when you hijack the VR library, so I wanted to give you guys an idea of the spectrum from high end game to one that generally performs well in Steam VR. Looking at the data for R Factor 2, you can see that the game holds a better frame rate and is more consistent overall using Open Composite versus Steam Native. It certainly felt a lot smoother playing through a few races whilst recording in Open Composite. Moving over to Assetto Corsa Competizione, and the picture is slightly different perhaps because of the demands of the game. The average frame rate does see a boost, as does the peak and minimum frame rate, but the game doesn't see the consistency improvements that we found in R Factor 2. It's worth noting that recording in VR has some impact on your FPS, and in normal conditions, R Factor 2 is much closer to 90 frames per second on average for me, but as we're looking at a relative performance improvement here, it's still clear that there is a difference in performance across the two libraries, at least using my Reverb G2. Now, Sims directly supporting OpenXR, this list is rather thin right now. iRacing has a native implementation over OpenXR, so you can simply select it from your list of supported standards and start playing straight away. This is great for anyone using VR with iRacing. What about the rest of us? Now, this is where Open Composite comes in. It is a modified library for games built for OpenVR, using that API and translating it to OpenXR. So anything that supports Steam VR should work through Open Composite and allow you to use OpenXR instead. In fact, a full system install of Open Composite replaces Steam VR entirely. You might want to do this for simplicity, but we'll talk about why you might not want to do this in all cases. 
I'll provide a direct link for the Open Composite installation in the description of this video. You can also find it on the GitLab page, but it's a little hidden in the documentation. To install, open the downloaded zip file, extract the contents, and then double click opencomposite.exe. This will open a dialog box showing the, the current default, which will be SteamVR. Switching that to Open Composite changes the default to Open Composite, or you can configure applications individually. On this screen, you can also switch the default back to SteamVR if you've already decided to use Open Composite in the past. You can, of course, use SteamVR as an OpenXR runtime instead of the one provided natively by your headset. Your mileage may vary on this though, and personally, I found the WMR OpenXR runtime to give significantly better performance than the SteamVR one. Every great library has an even better companion app. OpenXR Toolkit actually has little to do with Open Composite other than it runs on OpenXR. However, it has a number of great little touches that will make life a lot better if you choose to go down the OpenXR route. For us sim racers, the important features it offers are around coveted rendering, sharpening, image upscale via FSR, and some various little tweaks. This allows us to tweak performance of our sim without having to drag and drop files in all of the installation directories like I had to do back in the day with OpenVR. Installation of the toolkit is a simple affair. Download the toolkit from GitHub, open the wizard up and install the toolkit. Once installed, you should open up the OpenXR Toolkit companion app and make sure you are happy with the settings and hotkey chosen for you. Pay special attention to how you can open the menu in game. It's quite important for later on. To use the toolkit in game, open the menu using the shortcut you saw in the companion app. And from your headset, you can now make changes we were talking about earlier on, like forfeited rendering. Some of these changes will require that you restart the game to take effect, but at least you won't have to switch between your headset and the desktop continuously to get things how you like them. Game compatibility is listed on the OpenXR Toolkit website, and whilst it might be compatible with your game, pay special attention to any notes that might be attached to it in order for it to work properly. Earlier on, I described how you might want to selectively install or individual games. Initially, I had problems running Open Composite on R Factor 2. Eventually, this turned out to be due to my system running low on virtual memory. I had to move a disk cache. This wasn't obvious in OpenXR though, and only came to light when swapping back to OpenVR. Instead of getting games crashing for no apparent reason now, I received nice error messages from OpenVR telling me why I had issues and I was running out of virtual memory. It makes it much easier to debug. Having the ability to selectively use OpenXR allows you to troubleshoot games that aren't running as you'd expect. There are other issues for OpenXR and R Factor 2, like an upside down loading screen that might annoy some people. Maybe enough to stop them using it, especially as this particular game isn't the most demanding on the system anyway. Now, a loading screen from the other side of the world might sound annoying. There is worse to come. All those lovely third party overlays you like to run in SteamVR, well, they just don't work in OpenXR, not right now. That may change with time as more developers look at implementing the standard and we know overlays exist, otherwise the OpenXR toolkit wouldn't function. But it does mean extra expense in software development for a tiny niche. So they don't expect a massive rush to get these implemented. This unfortunately also includes native implementations like that found in iRacing. When you set Open Composite to be your default VR library for Steam, this is not permanent. 
I found updates to Steam VR overriding the setting, and before you know it, it's no longer directly using OpenXR again. It's a simple fix to rerun the setup, but annoying if you've just hopped on for an online race. Tiny improvements can add up significantly. OpenXR in general and the Open Composite wrapper help unlock a small amount of performance, which is great, especially for those of us using Windows Mixed Reality headsets, which is far from a perfect experience. Add on the toolkit and things start to get really interesting with FSR tweaks available to us and the ability to implement fixed profited rendering. We can start to think about getting all of our sims performing at a good level without having to spend days adjusting config files. Steam VR now natively supports OpenXR, so if a game directly implements it, then doing the open composite dance may no longer be necessary. With support in Unreal, hopefully we'll see that standard in all new games and maybe some we already know and cherish. But for now, at least, we do have an option to improve our system performance a little without spending a huge amount of money. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video outlining what Open Composite is and how you can start using it. If you have, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing here. And until next time, guys, goodbye for now.